from, uh, or all of the glass, it's glass, River Valley glass work. I have a feeling I will be calling the glass stones a lot in this playthrough. Just be warned, I can't help myself. Then, Welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and board gamey things. I'm alone, as you can see. I'm doing a little solo mode over here on Foster the Meeple. What the heck? Usually I do these videos on Board Game Geek. By the way, I have a solo video series on Board Game Geek. If you didn't know, now you know. You can go check it out. Super duper fun. But today I am here to do a playthrough video for you. And today's playthrough is going to be on River Valley Glassworks, a new game from All Play, who very kindly sponsored this video. It is designed by Adam Hill, Ben Pinchback, and Matt Riddle. And you may recognize those names from games such as Three Sisters, Fleet the Dice Game. Motor City, French Quarter, etc. They've done a ton of games. So today we are just going to do a solo playthrough of River Valley Glassworks for you. I'm really excited. I have played this both multiplayer and solo, and it is on BGA now if you're interested in trying it. And it is also on Kickstarter. So if you watch this playthrough and it seems like something that you might be interested in, all of the links and everything will be down below for you so you can go and check that out. But let's dive into it, shall we? So for today, I am going to, well, for today, I'm gonna to put that right there, boom. So for today, what we're gonna do is I am going to kind of run through how it works, how the game works, and then we're just gonna dive right into a solo playthrough. This is not an official how to play video. There are a few other people who have done how to plays, um, so I will direct you to some of those in the links in the description. However, this is how you play solo, all alone, not all by yourself, lonesome, just like me. <laughs> Okay, let's just dive into it, shall we? So, as you can see, I am set up here for a solo game. Now, I know what you're thinking. Does the game come with an iPad? It does not. So, I do have a prototype version of the game, and not every prototype was made with the solo mode kind of attached. So, typically in a, like, in the final product, you would have different player boards, so different characters. On one side, it would be the multiplayer version, and flipped over to the other side would be the solo version, but right now mine are the same Z's, okay? So I have my solo character here on the iPad that we're gonna play with. So I will be playing as the Beaver Boutique, which I thought was quite fitting due to Canada. I'm Canadian. And beavers are like a national treasure here. I don't know if you knew that. So I'll be playing as the Beaver Boutique, and I will be playing against Otto Snugs, the otter. So each of the solo characters that you are able to play have a few differences. Uh, they have different difficulty levels. So I am showing you Otto because it is kind of like the intro solo kind of character that you can start with in River Valley Glassworks because he is a one out of four difficulty. So each character will come with their name, their difficulty le level. They will also have their own special rules, their own special board that correspond with their special rules, as well as a surplus section and a waste section, which we'll get into uh, shortly, okay? But first, before we do that, let's just talk generally about River Valley Glassworks. So the game is played over a series of rounds. On your turn, I'm gonna be going back and forth between myself and the kind of AI character. But on your turn, you can do one of two things. The first thing that you can do is you can place and gather. So you'll see I have this little satchel and maybe I'll move it right here so it's a little bit easier to see. So I have a little satchel here that has three different stones. So what I can do is I can choose any of those stones and I can place them in the corresponding section of the river. So with this little oval one, I could place it here. Then I get to gather from an adjacent space. So because there's nothing on this side, I would need to gather all of the gems from, uh, or all of the glass, it's glass, River Valley glass work. So I would take all of the glass from that section and I would put it in my satchel. Then 
you take the empty river piece and you are going to slide it to the start of the river and sliding everything else downwards, okay? So that's option one. Oh, and then you're going to refill it with whatever the um, stones are in front of it. So in this case, it has two stones in front of it. So we would take our sweet bag and we would go through it, draw out two stones and then put them on the river, okay? So anytime that you do that, and those shouldn't have gone in my satchel, so we'll keep that a little bit separate. So this is now what we have to place in our little beaver boutique, okay? So placement rules are you always need to start, especially with your first one, on the emptiest, the emptiest, the leftmost empty space, which is the emptiest, the start. So in this case, I would have a blue and a black. Shape doesn't matter for placement on your board. It only matters for gathering. So let's just say I put this blue one here. I would have to put the black one here. I couldn't put it like this because it's not the emptiest leftmost space, which is now how I'm going to refer it, okay? So that's kind of the placement. If I had taken this, whoopsies, this as an example, two matching colors, then I would need to put them in the same column. Basically, what you're going to be scoring at the end of the game is your two tallest columns and any of your rows that are as completed as they are, which I'll get to when I talk about scoring. The next action and the only other action that you can do is draw. So down here in the lake, we have five different stones. When you draw, you are going to take four stones from the lake and you're going to put them in your satchel. Now your satchel does have a limit of five, so if you've taken four, and as you can see, I had two, then you have to get rid of one. Let's just say I got rid of this one. In a multiplayer game, you would just simply refill the lake at this point. However, in a solo game, you're actually going to take that extra leftover fifth glass, and you're going to put it in your uh, opponent's satchel. Now there's one thing to note, once again, it's a prototype. The uh, AI, the solo player satchel, should only have three spaces. So that's just something to keep in mind while watching this playthrough. But there's only three spaces because one of the end game conditions is that we have filled all three of the spaces on the AI's play satchel. Then we're gonna refill the lake back to five glass and then it will be the next player's turn. So those are the two things that you can do. That's how me as a human works. However, the AI character is going to work a little bit differently. Everything is written right here, and I wonder if I can zoom in. Would you look at that? It's pretty good. For his gather action, Otto gathers the river tile with the most glass. If tied, choose the closest to the lake. So this is a great example here. So if it was Otto's turn, he is going to look for the river tile that has the most glass on it. So we have one, two, three, four spots that have two glasses on them. So he would take the one that is closest to the lake. Okay, he'll take all of these. And then you're going to shift just as normal. So you would move the river along. And then we would refill with two stones because there are, sorry, two glass because there are two stones ahead. I have a feeling I will be calling the glass stones a lot in this playthrough. Just be warned, I can't help myself. Then he's gonna have to place out the glass that he just got. So placement works in a similar way as in he is going to start with the left most emptiest spot for a color. But a unique thing with the AI characters, as you can see right here, when placing two new colors, Otto uses this order. So that will tell you which order to place things in. So as you can see here, yellow comes before the dark blue. So he would place yellow and he would place blue. Now, when he covers up certain icons, different things are gonna happen. Anytime that Otto covers one of the different shapes, so as an example, we just covered that one up, you're going to add one glass to the river tile matching that shape. So let's put this back. We will pull one from the river bag, and remember it's that kind of squash looking thing. 
uh, and that is right here. So you'd add one there. The other symbol that can be found on Otto's board is this little time. I almost said time piece. Sand timer. <laughs> Time piece, okay. When Otto covers an hourglass, you skip his next turn. So that's, that's pretty good, okay? We love to see it. So on the AI characters, they also have two other spaces on them. The first is the surplus, which you get plus three per piece. A surplus is any time that you take a color that can no longer go into or fit into the column. As an example, if we had continued with this one with all the yellows, if I gained another yellow but it couldn't fit in this column, it would go in the surplus, which will score them three points at the end of the game. The waste, however, is negative five points per piece, and that's the eighth color. So Otto can only take seven of the the eight colors so one of them if he ever has to take it has to go into the waste speaking of which the same thing kind of happens with us so on this side you will see I have an overflow area well if I ever have to take let's say the blue we'll pretend that's full I have to take another blue but it's already at the top it has to go into overflow or if I can't take a certain color because I have all of the rest of the spots filled it has to go in overflow, and those are worth negative points at the end of the game, which is no bueno. That is how the game functions. I'm gonna take a turn, Otto's gonna take a turn. I'm gonna take a turn, Otto's gonna take a turn. Back and forth, back and forth, until the game ends. And the game is going to end in one of two ways. The first way is if either myself or Otto gets 17 glass pieces in our little boutique or shop. So we have a tracker here, an inventory tracker, that every time I add a new piece of glass, beep, 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 we're gonna climb right up there, okay? The other way is if we ever get three glass pieces into Otto's satchel, the game will end. Then we'll move into scoring. Now, scoring, as I mentioned before, is done by your two tallest columns and then all of your rows. So for Otto, he scores a little bit differently. He'll just be scoring for rows and not columns. And then obviously he's also gonna get plus three points for his surplus, negative five for his waste, and we are also gonna get some negative points if we have any overflow as well. The last thing that I wanted to mention before we just dive in to the river and the lake um, is that there is different rarities with the glass, which is all right here on kind of like on our player board. So the most common pieces that you can get are purple and white. The least common or the most rare are orange and yellow. And then it kind of shows everything in between. And during five player games only do you use a black glass. So these we will be removing when we actually start to play the game. That is how you play. Let's just get into the playthrough. I will explain everything as I'm doing it. Am I gonna make optimal choices? No. Am I going to make mistakes? Probably. That's okay. I will pop them up on the screen if I do make any uh-ohs and I'll put them in the description so that you can make sure to know that I fudged up. All right, let me reset all of this, and then we're gonna play a game. Okay, so update. Um, you'll notice that the black glass pieces are still here because my prototype version did not come with yellow pieces. So I'm just gonna add in the black ones to make sure that we have like eight different colors <laughs> so that we're all good. Okay, so I'm gonna be first player because I said so, and let's just dive right in, shall we? and hopefully we can beat Otto. Okay, me first. So, what do I even have? Okay, I have this, let's do this. So I'm gonna put this one here, and then I'll take these two right here. And those are both kind of rare, that was probably not the best idea. All right, so I've got these, let's boogie. Weep, okay. So we'll put one on this one, and then we will place. Let's do it this way, shall we? We shall. Okay. So back, so over to Otto. He is going to take whichever one has the most. So three of them have two. So he's like, hmm, what about do? He's going to take this one though because it's closest to the lake. He loves the lake. 
we have otters at our house. I don't know if anybody knew that. The lake, the bay, the it's not a lake, it's the ocean, but the bay was frozen and they were slip sliding all over it. It was great. You'll love to see that. Okay. So his preference is to place orange first and then light blue. So he's placing on top of a symbol. So we need to put one in there. That's Otto's turn. He's super efficient. Oops, I have to move that up because I have two in my inventory. Okay, let's see. I have two of this shape. And one thing I don't think I mentioned in the little teach is that if you have two of the same shape, you can actually use those at the same time and put them on any one of the um, spaces, but you're basically like losing one. You know what I mean, jelly beans? Okay, I think I might do this and I'll take these two, the green and the blue, okay? Put two glassies on there. So my green's gonna go on green and then blue is gonna go right here, mind of its own. So we're at four already. It's gonna go quick. So we have to be so efficient. So efficient. All right, lots of twos, but he'll take this one. Dang, I would have liked to have had that. That's fine. Weep, weep. Okay, we'll need two here. So he likes to have light green before dark green. So we've covered up a little circle. So that's gonna go right there. Okay, that's his turn. Back to me at the Beaver Boutique. I love that she's wearing a polo. So cool, okay. Ooh, yeah, let's do this. So I'm gonna put this here. He's gonna take that, but I think that's okay. We'll take this. Definitely gonna have to take some stuff from the lake. Next turn, okay. We're gonna go splish splashing in that lake. All right, so I am gonna put my purples here and then my white here. I think that makes sense. That makes sense to me. All right, he's gonna go for this one because it has the most. Uh-oh, did you slide? I don't think so, I think that was there. So he's gonna take this because it's the most closest to the lake. Whee! And then we'll put two here. Beep, beep. Okay, so we know orange is gonna go here. Uh, he prefers purple before white, which is gonna put a, um, a glass piece there and then white. He's doing pretty good, not gonna lie. So I have to take five from here. So we definitely want maybe these ones, or sorry, four, I have to take four from there, not five. The leftover one is gonna go into his satchel. Two more and the game would end. Then we refill. Five, okay. So that was my turn, unfortunately. So, Otto's gonna take this one. He's a bit of a, a greedy guess, I'm not gonna lie. He's taken all the glass. He loves that shiny stuff. I mean, same. And then we're gonna put one here. All right, so, he's putting one over top of that symbol, which is here. And then another one, and then a purple. He starts getting more of these blues. He's gonna start taking a surplus. I don't like it. This one is looking pretty good. I can't really get it. He's gonna get that if I don't. <sighs> oh no. The thing is, if I, no matter what, like if I use these two, oh, but I can force him into negative points. Okay, so let's do this. I'm gonna use both of these like ovals here He'll be forced to take that, but he only has space for one of those two new colors. So he's gonna have to take negative points. And we're gonna get all of these. Have I forgot? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I should be at seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And he's at ten. Keep me honest with this inventory tracker. Okay, so this is gonna go here, pick up, and here and then we'll put the white above the white. Okay, good. He has to take this. So 
We'll shift the river first. Me. Um, and there's gonna be two here. Okay, so this is gonna be good because he's gonna have to skip a turn. So cover that up, skips a turn. Cover, he prefers, well, technically we're using black in place of yellow. So we'll just say that he prefers that, <laughs> which is gonna skip a turn. And then boom, there's the eighth color, negative five. I wonder if he has to skip two turns. When Otto covers an hourglass, skip his next turn. Well, he's covered two. I'm gonna make a judgment call and I'm gonna say that we're skipping his next two turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. It should be at 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. He's at 12. So I'm gonna take two turns because he skips two turns. I must optimize what I am doing. Really need a, an orange, but that's not happening. So I've put myself in a bit of a pickle here. <sighs> so I can either do this one or I could do this one. I think I'll do that one. Okay, let's do that. Shift. Okay, let's really, everybody. Oh, I won't be able to get it. <laughs> I was like, oh no, I won't. I was gonna say, let's really hope that it's a orange. Well, it wasn't, so no need to hope. All right, so we're gonna put the blue there and the white there, because at least we are, we're gonna score like this row. Okay, so that was one. He skips two turns. So hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we're at 12. You go here. So let's take, hmm, I should take the purple because I'm more likely to get a higher column on purple. Those out. So just put two out, one, two, so we're at 14. And next turn, I'm gonna have to go there. <gasps> okay, Otto, you've been very patient. So he's gonna take this. Because there's three of them. Beep. Okay, we'll do this. Interesting. So he will do a purple, which will put one out here. He will do a blue, which will put one out here and a green, which is a surplus. Rats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 for him. Okay, so back to me and I have to draw from here. So one, two, I want all different shapes. One, two, three, four. What shape are you? Okay, let's do those four and then that's gonna go to him. Okay, but it's back to him now. And he's gonna take these three. Oh no. All right. Beep. Okay, put two stones out. And then he's gonna place these, which you hate to see it. So that's gonna go there, which is gonna put one out here. Oh, I was like, he can't take it, but he can. <laughs> Shoot. So that's gonna go there, which is gonna put one out here. Yeah, I really screwed myself with these rows. Oh, gum gum. <sighs> okay. This would be, this is the smartest. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. This is gonna be the smartest one for me to take because it is going to force him to take this and those two dark blues are negative points. You love to see it. All right, so I need this shape. So I'll take all three of these, shift this, and we'll put one here, there, boom. And that works for me, because at least I got one full row. Oops, I forgot to put five out here. Sorry, I forgot. Oopsie whoopsies. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So I'm at 17. 
So I've triggered the end game. Now, if I had less than three pieces of glass in my satchel, then I would have to redraw up to three, but I have three, so I don't have to do that. So we're gonna finish this current round and then each of us are gonna get one more turn. So Otto still gets his turn right now. And he is going to take this, which is great, honestly, for us. Otto, you greedy little butt. Okay, we're gonna put two here. So he'll put this here, which is gonna put one out here. And then both of these are his eighth color. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, me. So it's the last turn. We each get one more turn. I really need it. <laughs> Another orange. Oh, I was really dumb. That was so dumb to put those there, Jamie. Well, this right here is exactly what we want because we need that purple and that white. Can we get it? If, yes, we can. And it's gonna force him to take this. He's gonna get plus three, but he's also gonna get another negative five. <laughs> oh, Otto. That's what you get. That's what you get. Sorry, sorry, but I'm not, oh, I needed that. I really needed that. Dang, okay, so that's gonna go there, there, and there. Oh my God, imagine how many points if I could have just had that. Shoot, okay, he's gonna take this. Shift, ring, put two here. Oopsies, oh my God, all the ones I need. Coming up now, all right, purple, blue is gonna go up here, and then green is gonna go up there. And that, that's the end of the game. So now we are just going to tally our scores. So let's start with Otto, shall we? He is scoring for completed rows. So he is 22 plus 16. Let's get a calculator. I'm not about this life, counting in my head. Calculate trees. Then he has three plus three plus three. Three, six, nine plus nine minus 5, 10, 15, 20. All right, 27 for auto. Ha! All right, I hope I did better than that. <laughs> I didn't have any of my overflow, so I think I did. So I have 22 plus 20 plus 25. So I have 45, 55, 65. I demolished him. I did so much better that I, Oh wait, I plus one, because this is another row here. Plus one. So I've super demolished him. Oh, I'm sorry, Otto. I'm sorry. Glad I won. Okay, but that is River Valley Glassworks solo mode. This game goes by so quickly. It's even in a multiplayer game, you can easily kind of set up and play a bunch of different uh, rounds of the game. Super quick. So I just wanted to show you just an example. This is auto, which is a one star. Excuse me. The next up is spring and skip. And there are two difficulty. And their whole thing is about kind of like, you know, leapfrogging. So anytime you cover up one of these areas, you put glass out onto the corresponding section of the map. So that is River Valley Glassworks. I would love to know down below if you've had a chance to try this out on BTG, the, or on BGA, the solo mode is not available on BGA. It's just the two to five player game. Um, but if you've had a chance to try it out, let me know what you think. If you've backed it, I would love to know if you're kind of interested in it. Um, yeah, let me know down below in the comments. But that is everything that I have for today. So I am so glad you came, and hung out with me for a little while as we got all this glass. That is definitely not gems. Kind of looks like gems, but it's definitely not gems. But that is everything that I have for today. If you're interested in buying board games, not this one. This one you have to get right now on Kickstarter, but eventually you'll be able to get it at your friendly local gaming store. So you should check first your friendly local gaming store for all of your board game needs. For us, that is Boardroom Game Cafe. If you like snacks, try Munch Pack. And if you like what you see, please subscribe. Hope to see you again soon. And now I say goodbye. Goodbye! River Gladly. We all on the same page there? Perfect.
Maybe you don't. Maybe you want to get them. Honestly, I have no strategy. You guys should know me well enough by now to know I'm just freewheeling, freewheeling my strategy and hoping for the best. I'm going to have the best glass works ever. No stones. I'm glad you hung out with me while we, while we did this. <gasps> See, Otto's River Gems. Otto gets it.